please suggest a slider until the dog and the cat are friends. What? Oh. That's so cute. Why are we doing this? Please suggest a slide until number five becomes the number nine. Uh, okay. Okay, there's a number nine, technically. Nine. House, home. The number no Oh, there is a number nine. The regular number nine. There we go. I don't know why we're doing this. I just started up the game. Please adjust the slider until you stop adjusting the slider. Uh, about there, I would say. Which of the two made up words below is most appealing to you? Occu bo wait, Occuboynicle? Occuboynicle? Or Scrumtush? Scrumtush. I think that's. It's the hardest to pronounce, but it sounds much better than Scrumtush. I can't even pronounce that, so yes. Let's go for the first one. Please don't adjust the slider. Okay. Do you know what time it is right now? Uh, yes. <laughs> I didn't look on my phone or anything. Is the time that it is right now the correct time? No. The correct time for what? What is time anyway? Yes. Good question. Is there anything about yourself that you haven't told me? Uh, sure, there's loads of things. Help. Okay. You need help? Will you come back to visit me? Yes. This isn't my final video. I hope. Well, what is up everyone? Hi, me Phoenix. How are you getting on? Welcome back to the Stanley Parable 2. Uh, that was an interesting start. But we're just going to continue where we left off. Last time, we lost our bucket friend. Still no All buckets. All co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Perhaps there is a bucket somewhere. Oh, it's back. It's here now. Stanley lifted the bucket into his arms. Yes. And a wave of comfort rushed over him. It sure does. I love comfort. It is my comfort bucket, after all. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Okay. We'll follow it again, but of course, something different will happen this time. We'll see what it is. There will be a reward for finding a mom. Ah. Trust the completionist instinct. Inside of a s mission status, inside of a sequel exhibit, Nearby a fireplace, a private but smelly place for an important person. There's also a large room, lots of boxes. Lots of boxes. Stairs, something to do with stairs. Aha, uh -huh. I know where the stairs are somewhere. Both red and blue. Is this some kind of game? Hmm. You can do it, red room. Thank you, good luck. Right, so something to do with the stairs. So there's gotta be. Stanley and the bucket on walked the upstairs to the boss's office. Maybe downstairs? Aha! There you are! Okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines, and now I'm torn between Stanlarines and Figlies. What do you think? Stanlarines are about much better. Encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get from seeing a small number in the corner of your screen go up by one. Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. There's gotta be a secret, though. It's gotta be. If Stanley here. just couldn't do it, <laughs> he considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fined for that. And in such a competitive One, economy, two, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. Huh. And then, something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. No, no. He looked down that's at the wrong. bucket in his arms. Oh. Am I crazy? He asked the bucket. Maybe the bucket returned off. his gaze, but said nothing at all. That's true. That's strange, Stanley thought. Usually the bucket is a source of guidance and wisdom for me in difficult times such as these. Yeah, but it's he just a bucket. bucket close, yet felt it is my of comfort its bucket. Reassurance and comfort. And that's when Stanley realized this isn't my bucket. 
It's just a normal, everyday bucket. No. Someone else's bucket, perhaps. No. How did I end up with someone else's bucket? This How did is that all happen? terribly wrong. Surely no good would come what? from this. Who knows what Where's sorts of bizarre hallucinations Stanley might experience without the psychologically grounding presence of his bucket. I don't know. Indeed. Now he noticed that the rooms were repeating, which was, of course, very odd. Yes. And now he felt himself floating off the ground. Oh. Oh, gracious. Oh. He exclaimed. Without my bucket, oh, I've God. gone truly mad. Where is it? I must find it. Far Where is my bucket? Distance, now he heard it calling to him. Where? Stanley! Stanley, it's my me! The bucket! Could it truly be? There's he so rushed many. forward from room to room, passing by one bucket after the next. None Which one's mine? Were None of them were his special bucket. No. Come to me, Stanley. Find me. Where is he? He had to find the bucket. He had to return to his old friend. It yes. was the only way to truly restore his sanity. And where then suddenly, it? he froze dead in his tracks. He knew where the voice of the bucket had been coming from. The real bucket was inside of him all along. Inside of me? It was what? incredibly painful. Oh, no. Stanley doubled over in agony and blacked out. Oh. The bucket was inside of me. That's... This is a story Slightly of a woman strange. named Mariella. Wait. Mariella? Where's Stanley? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, picked up her bucket of her comfort bucket. and security, and walked to her place of work. What? But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town, talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Oh, no. Right away, she knew what the problem was. What? This man had no bucket. Yeah. Of course he'd gone mad, ranting and raving about a narrator describing all of his actions and how everything is predetermined and free will is an illusion and it's all just a video game. Okay. It could all have been prevented if only he'd taken his bucket with him. Perhaps he didn't even realize he'd forgotten his bucket at home in the first place. Oh. How cruel the world can be, Mary Ellison. So it's just at home. hugged her own bucket even tighter. Aww. But of course, she had no time for this. No. There were a myriad of confusing problems she would soon have to confront at work, for which her bucket would provide absolute guidance and total clarity on everything. Oh, and I miss my bucket. To herself, my life kicks ass, and she backflipped all the way to work. <laughs> she what? Great. Am I Stanley again? All of his co-workers were gone. Okay. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go today. to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Hmm. This is even my bucket. The confusion and the chaos all seemed to hmm. melt away as Stanley embraced the bucket. Hmm. I don't know if I trust this one. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Yes. Somewhere both red and blue in a large room, lots of boxes. A large room with lots of boxes. Small floating objects have appeared. We have to synergize our resources to ensure their retrieval. There are many questions. There was no memo. Uh, what makes them float? Who took pictures of them? That's a good question. Maybe there's more clues though. As to where they are. Follow clues provided by employee 416. 416, huh? What is about... What about employee 416, though? Well, that's not it. Okay, somewhere both red and blue. Coming to a staircase. I'm not quite sure. Oh. This wasn't open before. Who's trying to hurt the panda? Who did this? Who's responsible? Why is there an elevator here? Let's go up. This is... This is interesting. This is all new. Man, there's so many paths, so many choices in this game. There's gotta be so many secrets. Everyone's playthrough must be so, so different. Which is a good thing. I do hope you guys enjoy it. My path will be unique to my playthrough. Very typical elevator music. How long is this elevator? <sighs> this is gonna take a while, isn't it? Two hours later. Oh. I pressed up. Wait, are we... This is the same place. 
does this elevator just not work? I feel like it's just vibrating and not actually doing anything. Okay, that's... That's very strange. An elevator that doesn't actually do anything. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Two, Stanley may have eight, broken down into an four, emotional five. dumpster fire, but Stanley guessed the correct code <laughs> by sheer luck. No, I just was remembered. It the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. It sure is. Although that's not what happens. Although, the bucket did help me, it comforted me, so... I guess that's important too. Still looking for a room with loads of boxes and a red and blue room. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, hmm. comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. Yes. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Will it? But will it, though? Stanley and the bucket walk straight ahead through the large door. Right, we're not going to go to the escape room again. control facility. Let's see then. If we can find anything that points towards where we're actually going. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. Yes. What horrible! We did see this before? This place hold. Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. Well, we know, right? It's a huge surveillance room, basically. So they say. The monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. <gasps> Everyone in it. the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. Oh, one's out, though. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst Couple into tears them. as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Hmm. How about mine, though? 427? Well, that's, that's just fine. There's at least one that seems to have an error. It's gotta mean something. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? No. Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things could that does a be? bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? Good question. These questions raised furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. Well. No! He screamed into the bucket. <laughs> he couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! Never? He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. But can we really trust the bucket? Is it even my bucket this but time? But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Fine, happy, huh? or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. What even is and this? as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would oh. dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the bucket, up against the world. What is this? They high-fived in a really cool way, <laughs> and the bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. Oh. Doesn't actually open. Console disabled. There's a lot of... Two... Is it the same code again? Two, five, four, eight. Just press two. Did make a good sound. Five. That make the great sound. It's the right code. Two, one. I don't think I'm doing it right. Okay, so two and five seemed right to me. Oh, but not anymore. Okay, so it does remember the code, it seems. Oh, but it's closed off. Maybe I cannot do this yet. Unless there's hidden buttons that I didn't see. Okay, 255. Five. Made a good sound, so maybe it's correct in a way. 3, okay. Okay, 3, so that was good. <laughs> I think. 
No. No. Maybe five again. No. Okay, well. There must be something to it, but I don't know how or what quite yet. I already turned this thing off. When at last, last they came to the source of the room's power, yeah. Stanley and the Bucket knew it was their obligation to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. It's on. But at the last second, the Bucket jumped in and pressed the button to turn on the controls. Stanley yes. gasped in horror. Horror? Well, point, well, it might not be that bad. To take over the machine and claim the power for itself? That can't be the case. How could the Bucket have betrayed him like this? Stanley was prepared to throw the Bucket away in disgust when suddenly an image appeared upon the enormous screen. <gasps> birds. Seagulls. Silly. Silly birds. The control buttons became active again. Again, silly birds. Uh, <laughs> this type of bird. Flamingos. Oh. Oh. Stanley flipped hmm. through one video of silly birds after Penguins. another, and then it dawned on him. Ah. This wasn't a mind control facility at all. It was a facility for monitoring and surveilling silly birds all over the world. That couldn't be the, the case. The mind controls were only a facade to disguise its true intentions. No way. Had the bucket known this all along? Probably. Stanley marveled at the metal genius in his hands. Huh. The it's so smart. The bucket knows all. Incredible discovery. Stanley and the bucket never found freedom because they spent the rest of their lives here in this place, okay, living through great. live streams of the silliest birds imaginable. Of all the possible paths his life could have taken, this one was surely the best. Sure. And Stanley was happy. He was happy. So. Good ending again <laughs> but that isn't actually an ending is it no so there was something about a room i wonder why that door is open i've never been down that hallway i don't think i'm not gonna take the bucket this time when stanley came to a set of two open doors he entered the door on Let's his left go right this stanley might be the way directions it's incredible he wasn't five years ago i've never been up there actually i know i jumped to my death and i jumped up here. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your wait, trust in someone there it is. else can be difficult, but oh, the no. fact is that the story has been about nothing there? but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. How do I, how someone you've forgotten there? about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. For her? This is it, Stanley. Who is her? Your chance to redeem yourself. Is to it? put your work aside. To let her back into your life. Her? She's been waiting. She has? How do I get there? I see a fence. I cannot jump over the fence. Maybe I can get up there and then jump down something? No. But there's a collectible, that's for sure. I need to get that somehow. Makes sense, there is a lot of boxes here. But we've never actually gone this way, so... Who is he actually talking about? That's her, Stanley. It is? You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. To if her. you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. But... I am not sure if I would want to As do Stanley that. picked up the phone, ah. a white light engulfed him, I filling up him the not just plug. with radiance, but with hope. But hope I... for a life reunited one... Wait. No. Oh, goodness. I, Stanley, I just pulled the plug. did you just unplug the phone? <laughs> yes. No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you ah. do that? I, you actually I... chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. Let I... me double check. Yeah. No, it's definitely huh? here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's I taken to his apartment though. where he finds his wife, and the huh. two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None Good of question. these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Well, I'm a Wait player. a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. 
How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. Well, <sighs> finally, huh? I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you'd made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. Oh, it's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not oh. grasp the severity of the situation? It's well, I a game. Kind of I don't know what you watch. want from me. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Uh, Please that's observe not this needed. helpful instructional video I think I'll be Choice. okay it's the best part of being a real person really if used incorrectly can also be the most dangerous for example yes, in is. this scenario a hypothetical real person named Rupert has a choice he could okay. invent a machine that eliminates food shortages across the world to make life better for all people Wow or he could spend years of hard work forgetting how to read hmm. which choice would you make Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense, and at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with right. a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Ah, is that Allow how it the works? person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. Ah... Uh. Yeah, that's what Excellent. I always say. Making choices on a regular basis is the best oh. part to a healthy decision-making process. Great. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? I less. Technically, you make. If you you constantly make your choices. choices are actually meaningful, and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant, ah. and the feeling should subside. Mm. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Infield exercise? I don't... Ah, oh. welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But I not see. to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see uh -huh. what the correct thing to do would have been. Okay. This way, please. I don't. Okay. Oh. Now that we know your choice is even meaningful, oh, we I can't, can't even have jump you off. jumping off the platform and dying. Huh. Imagine the main character dying senselessly the halfway thing is through gone, the though. story. That story would make no sense at all. The Stanley we figure. Home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. Hmm. So there's got to be another way. Well, I guess it's leading me back to the right path. Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Thanks. That's just what I wanted. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No, I'm a player. I no! have a choice. Why did you do that? Oh. Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. What is happening here? Oh. Huh. Everything is just broken. Oh, oh it's ruined. my God. You, I can't believe after everything we talked about <laughs> that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! There's a secret Why? door there. For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. No. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, well, I have just to. Just let me continue. I have to shut the game down. I have to. Wait. I have to. Oh, God. 
Whoa. What just happened? Hello? Whoa! I'm, I'm here. You're here. I'm still here. Where? Here in this pile of rubbish. With you. Yes. You. Who thought you were so clever. I am clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. I'm sorry? It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you run it into the ground. I didn't really... What? Did you think that would be that. funny? You just had to see? I... Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? Well, I... He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands okay. that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That I'm thought sorry. hadn't even occurred to you, had it? No. That there's a world outside of you? No. You're a child. Oh, come on. Oh... My story. What a child. <laughs> if you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. Wow. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard to make... ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That oh. means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. Her I'm quite sure back. you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. We do that. This time. Is this just going to continue the story now as normal? or? Yet there was not a single person here either. Normal Feeling a wave First of disbelief, version. Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a start, oh, Stanley walked ah. upstairs to his boss's office. I cannot do anything wrong at this point. Okay, that's... Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley this was is once new? again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Please Shot speak clearly unraveled. into the receiver. Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. That's, Surely yeah, behind yeah. this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. How? He had seen it on his boss's computer just last a, week. It's Night a voice shark, receiver. 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley what? had been trained never to speak up. Yeah, I was just now, about to say, Stanley doesn't speak. Of the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Uh, go ahead, Stanley. Night Shark 115 is the answer. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver right there on the wall. Night Shark 115. Come on, Stanley. It's not that difficult. I'm sorry, is there a problem? Yeah, he cannot you speak. You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Nothing I can do. Okay, fine. You're not going to do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing. I'm for your sorry. Respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. Well, if he, you didn't want to see what I had to show it. you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through no. the door on the right. You could I'm, have done no. whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why I, did you come this way? Speak. Try. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. You... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, what? he entered the door on his left. <laughs> Excuse me? Stanley? Hello? Hello? Are you... Is I'm up okay? here. I'm in the ceiling. Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Oh, this is so sad. Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We Aww. can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? 
Are you listening to this? Danny, are you there? I, okay. It's okay, I can wait. Oh. I need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. I cannot do anything. Take as much time as you need. I'm sorry. Well, that's the first time I actually saw the end and credits, I think. That was so sad. <laughs> I felt so bad for him, you know, like, I it's weird because he, I know he's just a narrator on a game, but I felt so genuine, like he was genuine sad that I wasn't making a choice for him. And at that point, he just wanted me to make a choice, even if it's not what he wanted me to do. But there was nothing I could have done there, right? There was no way to speak the code. Stanley cannot speak, and I cannot speak for him. So... Yeah, that was strange. But, however, the game does continue, so... We're not at a definitive ending, at least. I don't think so. So next time we're gonna try some more stuff. I want to try to find the last collectibles. I know where one is, I just don't know how to get it. And I know... I don't know where the other is. A red and blue room. I don't know what that means. Um, but we'll try to find it. If you have any suggestions, of course, feel free to let me know. And yeah, we'll be back. Fun game. Interesting game. Very unique. I like it a lot. Making me question quite a bit of things about me and, and <laughs> my actions in the game. Huh. Well, anyway, this is you, Phoenix. I hope you enjoyed. Subscribe now for more to come. Until then, be brave, be kind, and stay awesome.